Hi friends, host Eric here, host talking with famous people and your future president of the United States of America. I present this video as a State of the Union speech, even though I'm not yet president. I think it's appropriate that one who shall become president practice such presidential matters. So I've broken this State of the Union address into a few different categories. The first being America stuff, the second one being TWFP stuff, the third one being host Eric stuff. Let's start with the America stuff. Part of the reason for this video is to announce again, make sure people are aware that I am in fact running for president. I'm not currently officially running for president because you have to file paperwork and stuff. I haven't done that yet. It is my actual intention to do so. I am taking the measures necessary to move this process forward. I have a GoFundMe campaign for my presidential campaign. These will be donations of a political matter, of a political manner. If you want to fund my presidency, my campaign for presidency, you can do that with a GoFundMe page. While I strongly encourage and welcome any such donations and assure you that they will be used for the prescribed purpose, which is to say to enable me to run for president. This is something that needs to happen. I believe myself uniquely well positioned to be president and uniquely qualified to be president. So let's start with the darkness of the status quo. The darkness of the status quo is the complete lack of qualification of anybody who's currently in politics, more or less. What I mean by a lack of qualification is they don't know enough about issues or policy. I do. I am a debate coach who studies public policy for the purposes of his job day in and day out. They aren't smart enough to understand their own limits and the limits of human agency and the limited ability that humans have to predict the impacts of their behavior. So, in other words, there's a lack of knowledge, there's a lack of humility, and second, there's a lack, last, the third, there's a lack of intelligence. So, you need to know a lot, you need to be humble, and you need to be smart. Current administration, obviously, none of those things. I'm not here to bash Trump. If you think that Trump's a problem, you're right. If you think that Trump's the problem, you're wrong. The problem is much deeper, much bigger, much more significant than Donald Trump. So the darkness of the status quo is a broken system of rules, a failure to apply limiting principles, a failure to prioritize what's most important. It's a failure to be honest with ourselves about the way math works, for example, and money. It's a failure to be honest about with ourselves about how things come to be. And it's a refusal to acknowledge that we can't actually predict all the impacts of setting in motion a complex system of levers and and force vectors that compel change upon people. Sometimes things work out well and sometimes not so well. The darkness then is not that we are using the tools badly, although we are. The darkness is not that the tools are bad, because they aren't, but they're often used in bad ways. The darkness is implicit to our own souls it is a refusal to acknowledge the limits of single entities in terms of capacity to correctly, meaningfully, and with good results dictate onto others what must be. We have a system in which we're electing somebody to function in that capacity, many people think. That's not the job of president. When you elect me president, I'm not going to be up there 
behaving like a dictator or feeling entitled to dictatorial powers. I'm going to be there to exercise the purposeful use of resources and force vectors that have come from the office of the executive as intended. Additionally, I'd like to see that executive office take on the role of constraining other excesses in government. Now, the brightness of the future comes from the fact that we have an amazing amount of momentum towards justice, truth, and goodness. And it comes from empowering individuals and detaching local success criteria from centralized success criteria across the board. It stems from the fluidity of information. The ability of people to communicate with each other across long distances instantly bypassing some third party system that provides them the means to do so, more or less. Technology, the internet, has allowed us to improve dramatically as people. Not because of what it's enabled us to do, but because of how it's enabled us to talk to each other. Because of what it's prevented. In other words, the insular dismissiveness that's implicit to sticky information is cured by fluid information. I may disagree with you. I'll have better reasons the more I talk to you about it. And I'll disagree with you in more correct ways the more I hear your wrongness. You'll detach from aspects of that wrong presentation of ideas the more often they lose in direct exchange. It's a naturally occurring improvement of humanity that happens when people talk to each other. And never before in all of human history has any individual human been as empowered to talk to any other individual human as he or she is right now. Lastly, this could be a subpoint of the brightness of the future. There is a genuine need for an engaged visionary here. By engaged visionary, I mean somebody who has a vision for how things ought to be and yet is engaged, so is not an ideologue. I recognize and understand the practical implications of taking action. I am not going to be a president who tries to dismantle the whole system, who tries to make dramatic changes that are consistent with his ideology, the consequences be damned. I understand that the ecosystem in which society grows now grows around rocks in the garden and sometimes, often enough, that which grows on these elements in the garden that maybe ought not have been there in the first place, nevertheless come to rely upon those elements for structural support. So it is with government. A lot of elements of society, aspects of society, groups, individuals, have parts of their lives defined by their interaction with government. So we cannot simply rip that established status quo away without while concurrently pretending that we're enabling them to exercise their own autonomous will more fully. And I'm not going to be somebody who does that. I'm not interested in doing that. The most thing I'm interested in doing is being an engaged visionary, which means I have an understanding of how society as a whole becomes a just and realized vision of itself, an idealized place, some place that is more consistent with the normative standards we can all agree with than the current status quo. And I'm most of all interested in engaging with you about these ideas and helping others to adopt position statements and affirmations, claims, stuff they advocate for that can genuinely withstand scrutiny, that will win the arguments, and to allow that which is most correct withstands the most scrutiny, wins the most arguments, to direct our actual course of action. We disallow compromise from principal positions as new action when we consider new actions for adoption. Now let's go on to TWFP stuff. 
one of the reasons why I believe myself to be the most qualified engaged visionary to be president is because I spend my days engaging in sharing visions back and forth with the various people who are in the rooms and comprise the community of talking fans people. There are a lot of very smart people around here. As a consequence, I'm accustomed to being in an amorphous group of autonomously legitimized individuals. While it's undeniable that to some extent I'm seen as a leader around here or a you know the guy it doesn't change the fact that I'm most comfortable and most accustomed to dealing with other individuals in an egalitarian fashion and what I mean by that is I'm not interested in being afforded credit for my ideas based on my status I want the ideas to be adjudicated on their own merits and I'm not afraid to have you attack my ideas. I'm not afraid to defend them. I will answer all your questions. I won't dodge your questions. I will respond to what you say. I will answer your questions. I will respond to what you say. If my claim is that you are wrong, I will tell you why you are wrong. And I will say, if you have a response to that and it successfully responds to it and counters it, rebuts it in some fashion, I will concede that. I will change my position. Now, it's hard to get me to change my position because the reason I'm the most qualified person to be president is that I have actually done all of the thinking on all major policy questions and have an answer for everything. Not just an answer that's my arbitrary whim, it's the answer that can be best sustained argumentationally. In other words, it's the most logically consistent and it legitimizes against the most different legitimization metrics and it withstands the most manner of attack and withstands sustained single attacks of all manner better than any other ideational conclusion. It's still a conclusion. It's conditional. It's not a belief. This is important. I do have some beliefs. I believe in God. And I didn't always. I mention it not to wave the God card at you because I think it's going to help me in an election but because it's true and I know that for a lot of people it's important I don't self-identify as a Christian but I certainly don't self-identify as anything other than a Christian either so to the extent that I were to self-identify as anything I probably would self-identify as Christian but I don't choose to self-identify as a specific religion merely leave it as I am a deist a believer in God monotheistic God next that's sort of community rooms but subject matters around here I've been talking about MBTI for a long time and the reason is pretty practical people watch those videos more I'm more or less tired of the topic so I anticipate myself branching out and talking about more topics politics makes sense because I'm running for president philosophy stuff is always fun for me to talk about ideational abstraction about how reality is, how individuals manifest realities as entities, all all that kind of stuff. I like talking about that stuff. But I do also like talking about practical political matters. I've got actual answers to things, actual solutions. I can say, here, okay, well, how do you want to respond to this, Eric? Here's how I want to respond to it. It may not be an exact solution to the problem that you think ought to be or whatever, but I will have a specific manner or way in which the federal government ought to respond to anything you put before me. I'm going to start talking about that stuff. I'm going to start talking about the various things that I do have concerns about in the country. I'm going to make videos that are topically specific. This one's not the State of the Union speech, but at least it's organized. Presentational friends. That's what I'm going at right now. I'm saying it's time for me to start framing things differently. I'm going to frame these videos in terms of meaningful chunks of information and ideas that are consumable in size, entree-sized ideas rather than not bite-sized certainly, but not buffet-sized. And I want to make clear what my positions on things are. I want to advocate specific things. In other words, I recommend you do this. It's something that because I'm egalitarian in ontology, I've always felt uncomfortable doing. 
but it's time for me to own that. That's my challenge. And I'm ready to own that challenge now. Which brings me to host Eric stuff. Coaching. One of the things that prompted this video was talking to Denise Kimball, my former assistant coach and former partner with Paul with Autonomy Debate. And she was telling me about it. Let's Google Daniel Dosh. I did. The results are all Daniel Dosh wins Green Hill, Daniel Dosh wins Presentation, Daniel Dosh wins CPS. All the big name debate terms. She's got like eight TOC bids already. Here's the thing. For people who aren't in debate, that means nothing to you. But for people who are in debate, David Dosh, her older brother, was my first real debater. I turned him into a debater. And he turned me into a debate coach. And he never won TOC, but he he badass too. Scott Wheeler, last two, not this, yeah, last year and the year before, Jerry Wang, my former debater, and Ram Tombe, that pairing under Scott Wheeler, my former assistant coach, won the national championship in policy debate last year and the year before. These are my former middle school students. My former assistant coaches. My former debaters coaching his sister. The Dosh's life is entirely different than it would have been had I not coached David Dosh in public forum debate when he was in 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. I have blind spots regarding myself in a lot of ways. So when I talk about myself, I generally don't do this. I don't try to ascribe additional value to myself than that which others ascribe on their own. In this instance, I need to explain to the people of the United States of America, and to you, viewer, why I actually am the president we need. I impact people's lives in dramatic ways, in ways that I often fail to acknowledge and recognize, or recognize and not acknowledge. I, It makes me uncomfortable on an FE level to hear praise, as it does for a lot of people. It, I like it and it makes me uncomfortable and I'm not sure how to respond to it. I'm wary of coming across as arrogant or self-inflated or whatever. But I'm running for president, so uh, time to own up to some shit. I'm talking to you about random people in my life that come into contact with me and end up being national champions, TOC champions. Daniel Dosh has, I think, currently more bids at this point in the year than anybody's ever had for TOC or something like that. And who's coaching her? David Dosh, my former debater. I don't take credit for all these successes of theirs. That's not my point. My point is people's lives come into contact with mine and they wheel away having been changed dramatically. It's happened in lots of circumstances. I've seen it happen a lot of times. So the thing about Daniel Dosh, that when I, I Google the name and it's just all over the fucking internet, just... The debate community, everybody in the debate community knows her. I put a Facebook post up the other day in the LD Facebook group saying, hey, I, uh, I've i got open office hours and you want to come and work with me, you come work with me. And a couple people did. They got great value out of it. They didn't know who the hell I was. They'd never heard of me. Well, why would they? Hi, Kimberly. The local one. You handed it to me. Well, I got seven grams. Thirty. That's what you gave me. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. We got plenty. It it this will last till a couple of days. Okay. Okay. You want me to go get us food? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. No. Okay, got you, baby. I'm going to come inside in a couple of minutes and I'll f follow up with this. Let me just finish what I'm doing real quick and I'm not going to get stuck on I'll be in, in a couple minutes, okay? Bye-bye.
All right. So that's the future first lady, Kimberly. Now she doesn't. She says she doesn't want the job. I stipulated to her that I'd be willing to, once I become president, create an office of first lady, or first, first other, and uh, so then I could hire somebody to be first lady. And then Kim and I would obviously she wouldn't sleep with me or anything. I'm just saying, you know, she'd play that role of first lady for first lady stuff because Kim's introverted. She doesn't really want to be part of the presidency. Um, anyway, right now, I have more evidence of great value than anybody in the world as poor as me. So, I have a long history of not converting my legitimate outlier status and my legitimately very high value in lots of different capacities into actual money for me. I'm trying to do that now in a couple of different ways. And one of them is to tell you that I am available. I am available. You can book my time by the hour at talk, uh, twfpcollectibles.com under services. And what do you what do you do in that hour? Whatever you want. I mean, if you want to talk about, you want me to assess you. You want me. You want to talk to me about your life situation. You want life coaching. You want uh, to talk about a particular subject. You want to learn about capital gains taxes. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, it, the the thing is, I actually do know a lot about everything, and it's not because I'm such a super genius. It's because with my medium smartness has been funneled through a career's worth of in, in a job that only rewards competence and effectiveness. It doesn't matter how smart you are if your kids lose in debate. It doesn't matter how bad your case is if your kids win in debate. It doesn't matter anything if you win. It doesn't matter anything if you lose. So you have to be effective. You have to learn to put your own personal babies out with the bathwater and go, okay, well, I was really, I really liked that idea. I was really attached to it, but I see now it's weak. Here's a where they could attack it. I'm getting rid of it. This quality in me has been honed over the course of a long time. It's called objective self-criticism and objective analysis of the other. I can't do it particularly well with Kimberly because I love her so much. But with anybody else and with any other situation, I believe myself more capable of doing it than any other person I've ever met. And I do it better than any other person I've ever met. So my current price of $60 an hour to work with me, whether you're a debater, an adult, um, you want advice on relationships, whatever, is shockingly cheap it's cheaper than it has been in recent years normally I, I wouldn't do one-on-one -on -one coaching in the past because I couldn't get any more than 100 120 an hour for it and it was not worth it well that's not me anymore I'm not rolling at all so I'm making compromises accordingly and I would highly recommend people who have thought that this is something they might consider to take advantage of the opportunity to do so now there's a lot of ways in which people who are in the community and active and such now are positioning themselves well. Um, there are ways you can invest in this thing that don't involve you literally investing and talking with famous people. Uh, there's an artifacts market that's... I have not stopped making... That's not... That's never stopped being a plan. I just have to get the tech in place to make it all happen. And then I'm going to have what's functionally a cryptocurrency that's linked to specific physical objects called talking with famous people are artifacts so uh and each of those artifacts is linked to an entity a person on talking with famous people and they'll be traded like commodities it, it, the thing is is will it work who knows i don't know yes it will that's is, this is the kind of thing where i can experiment and make it work figure it out the kind of thing I'm not going to do as president. I'm not going to just fiddle with shit and see what happens. Um, value. The value you get from me working with you, having a conversation with an hour, for you with an hour about 
something you want to talk about, ad my addressing my attention and analysis towards a matter of concern to you is definitely worth 60 bucks. So if you're interested, um, follow the link. Do that. Uh, if you are believe yourself politically active, not apathetic, and idealistic enough to think it's possible to make a difference, then indulge that idealism. And go to my GoFund thing. A GoFundMe page. And fund my candidacy for president. I want to point out one last thing before I go. Just as with anybody, nothing ever quite reaches critical mass until it's affirmed in whole. I affirm in whole that this community, talking with people, will grow. It will comprise the nucleus of a campaign that will elect me president of the United States. That when I am president, I will do my patriotic duty. I will respect the legitimate autonomy of every individual citizen of this country. I will respect additionally the realities of entrenched systems that one can't just rip out willy-nilly. Most of all, I will help all of us to speak more clearly, correctly, and truly about the political process. If you like me because I'm the alternative to those guys you hate, that's fine. I'll take it. Those guys you hate aren't the problem. What about those ladies I hate? They aren't the problem either. We can make it up as many little groups to demonize as we want. Trump and his supporters aren't the problem. What's the problem then, Eric? Bad discursive habits. Bad legitimization habits. Misapplied legitimization habits. A failure to metacognitive. A failure to analyze when and how to apply certain legitimization things. All of that stuff. Look at me. This is what I actually am. I didn't dress down to seem like a regular guy for this video. Like a politician normally would. It is actually, I just didn't feel like changing into something nicer. I thought about putting on a suit. I thought, eh, I gotta hang something. You want that. You don't want the guy who's attending, directing so much of his attention to manipulating you via things that aren't relevant. It doesn't matter whether I'm wearing a suit or not. I'll be the best president this country's ever had. I'll take it seriously. I'm an actual patriot. I think... Uh, maybe the last of those in the sense that I don't think a digital environment nurtures patriotism in a healthy way but my dad did he taught me that the Constitution mattered and that the uh, the State of the Union mattered so it authentically matters to me and that's not driving my decision-making both those things need to be true, and both of them are with me. Thank you for supporting me, if you do, even if just metaphysically. Thank you for contributing, if you do. Thank you for watching, if you're just watching. I appreciate your attention and consideration of what I say. Today's the day when I decided to stop being a lazy fuck and get some, get some things accomplished in this country. It needs to happen. And... I can't, I no longer just can't not do it. I want to do it. I'm most qualified, and therefore I will do it. And things are going to be a lot better. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese. Vote Host Eric 2020. If I'm not on the ballot, write it in. I'll try to get on the ballot.